How do you train with a clicker, Al? Very easily, Mandy. So, uh, you know, I, I actually like clicker training. Yeah, I, a, number of, a number of years ago, I actually was turned on to a, a couple of different trainers. And I'm trying to remember which trainer, which trainer really used clickers. Um, anyway, the clickers are really a very, very powerful tool. Love the tool, love what it can do. Um, but very simply, okay, the clicker is based on Pavlov's dog. You know, so in Pavlov's dog, you you guys have heard this before, you ring the bell and then the dog gets the food and you keep doing that. And then eventually the dog, when it hears the bell, it begins to salivate. So, you know, the clicker works the same way. You don't absolutely have to use a clicker, okay? You can use your voice and there's a lot of advantages. Uh, uh, there's a lot of advantages to both. To one, using your voice because you pretty much always have it with you. But there is another advantage to using a clicker. And I just want to, I want you to experience the advantage of a clicker. It's going to be very subtle, but I just want to show it to you. Here's the advantage of a clicker. So the advantage of a clicker is that it is incredibly consistent. Each and every time that you click it, it's going to sound exactly the same. But, okay, you can also use your voice. But one of the things that I see that my clients... I probably do it as well, is that we'll use a word like good. And what I see that happens is people will be like, good, good, good. They'll do different things with their voice. And not to say that a dog isn't that smart because, man, they're pretty wicked smart. But if you change the inflection of your voice, it actually can change the meaning of the sound a little bit to the dog, okay? So using a clicker in your training can really clarify exactly what it is that you want to intend to say to your dog, okay? Now, this doesn't come without warning. I will tell you, and I guess that's really, that, that's probably the next question that Mandy has. I, 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 is, wasn't the next question? Yeah, when, uh, when do you, when shouldn't you train with a clicker? Okay, so, yeah, okay, so when, uh, how do you train with a clicker? Very, very simply, let me, let me answer that first. How do you train with a clicker? It's pretty simple. I'm going to show you right now, but it's a, it's a two-part thing, okay? Hide the food to where it's not visible, and all you're going to do is you're going to click, and then you're going to feed the dog. Click, and then feed. What I don't want you to do, and notice how subtle the difference is, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to be offering the food at the same moment you click. you got to click, and then feed. Click, and then feed. And if the food is not in your hand, let's say that the food is in one of your pockets or it's in a treat pouch behind your back, make sure that you don't move back while you're clicking because if you do that, it's actually going to mess up the conditioning in the beginning a little bit. It's going to work against you. So what I recommend is you know, have your hand neutrally by your side, you click, and then you reach in, and then you reach in, and that's actually going to condition the clicker much, much better. So what was, what's, okay, what's this next question again? When shouldn't you train with the clicker? Okay, so here's a couple of things that oh, I want wait. you. I'm sorry, that wasn't the question, is why shouldn't you train with the clicker? So why shouldn't yes. you train with the clicker? Yes. Okay, so why shouldn't you train with a clicker? The main reason that you shouldn't train with a clicker is that you're not very coordinated. If you actually have a hard time getting each of the individual steps right, um, when you're training your dog, then you want to avoid training with a clicker because here's why. Every, each and every time that you click, if it's been conditioned properly, it's going to tell the dog that the information leading up to that moment is what I want you to remember. But if you're fundamentally making mistakes on the way you're communicating to the dog, like as much as like when you say your voice command, and then also if you're clicking and the dog hasn't done the thing that you want it to do, then you actually could be sending the wrong information to the dog. The clicker is a precision tool. It is not, it is not a, a general tool, it's very, very precise. And so clicking when your timing is bad can really hurt you. Let me give you just one common scenario that I see where people mess up clicker training. You'll say your voice command uh, let's say that you're going to get your dog to sit, okay? So you're walking along with your dog, 
and you say sit because you see another dog and that's how you want your dog to handle it. Your dog doesn't immediately sit and then you begin to use your leash to get your dog to sit. Maybe you even push the dog's butt and then your dog actually finally gets it right and at the moment to get it right, you click and then you give your food and then in your head you say, oh, the dog actually is understanding the word sit. But if the word sit was more than a second and a half, more than three seconds, maybe even more than five seconds away from the time you clicked, it actually didn't make that good of an association, okay? And even worse, let's just say that you said sit three times leading up to the moment that you actually do click and all that happened in a second and a half. Now the command is actually sit, sit, sit. The command would not be the one individual word sit. So I don't like to use a clicker if my technique or if I don't feel that the dog is really in rhythm with me um, because it can really begin to throw things off and you can actually give the dog wrong information. Now, I did just think about one more thing. And the thing that I thought, let's just say that you are actually training your dog to actually not be so reactive with other dogs and you have a clicker. So your dog sees the other dog then it pulls on the leash, but you know that when you click, your dog will turn around and come back and get food from you. So if your dog sees a dog, it pulls on the leash and you click, and yes, that does get the dog back to you, it actually rewards the dog for pulling on the leash and you're gonna get more leash pulling if you actually do that. So that's one situation that I don't wanna use a clicker, especially when I'm trying to do that. I use it a lot in just creating the general basic obedience in the beginning to help the dog understand the different skills when I'm teaching, but I actually don't use it a lot when I am practicing in real world scenarios. I actually like to use my voice quite a bit more.